I'd like to begin my presentation, I think, by saying that the world of technology combined with the turmoil in the mobile payments area okay, is never short of buzzwords and hype. For example, the biggest hype I've heard so far, which has been touted by numerous payment industry astrologers, okay, that stated mobile payments and virtual wallets will replace cards and cash by 2020. I mean, do you believe that kind of, of prediction? Anyone can make predictions. Doesn't require qualifications, expertise, skill. Okay? All you need is some boldness to make whatever prediction you want because there's no accountability, no responsibility required. So constantly you read in articles by all kinds of firms, consultants, whoever they are, making all sorts of predictions about growth rates. Now, I must say that once they talk about growth rates, okay, it's all meaningless statistics. What they should show in a real situation is the trend and the actual data, volumes and dollars. If they don't do that and they talk about growth rates, it's quite nons nonsensical because it could be from a very tiny customer base. So you could have 1,000, you could have 2,000 customers, and of course you can talk about growth rates, you know, or compound growth rates going into 100, 200, 300 percent, even after three or four years, it's still a very tiny customer base. And that is what is happening with mobile payments. Okay? There's so much hype, you just can't see what is really happening. And no one has released or published any reliable data about the real okay, uh, number of transactions, volume of transactions, regularity of the transactions, and certainly the dollar terms. No one has done that. The only one who can and who have meaningful figures is actually MasterCard and Visa, and they are not releasing those figures. I have industry figures because we access the information we require in the banking industry. And let me tell you how small mobile payments, particularly NFC mobile payments, really are. Last year, mobile, um, NFC payments are just 0.2% of payment card transactions. Now, that is 0.2%. I'm talking about PayWave and PayPass. These are really the NFC okay, world we are talking about. I'm at this stage disregarding transit and even our domestic cards, which are nets as such. So you can see how small the real market is in NFC payments. And now we have all these vendors being so excited about low value payments and all vying for a small slice of a very small pie. So I just don't understand what the business case is, really what the thinking is, what the strategy is. It just seems that everybody wants a slice of a very, very small market. Now that is really the situation we are dealing with. We constantly encourage our banks, financial institutions, to innovate, to introduce better financial services and products to the customers. So the big question now is, is NFC mobile payments, okay, the right technology to okay, launch more innovations when the volume of NFC payments are just so tiny And what problem is it trying to solve, NFC? We have all these so-called new products contending okay, to provide better payment services to the customers. 
But are they getting the results they hope to? Do they know what the results they should be? That means what critical mass do they need to make such products viable? I'm not even talking about profitable, to be just viable. Are they creating more transactions or we are just shifting transactions from cards or cash to a mobile device? And I'm referring mainly to a smartphone or a tablet. What advantages, what benefits is that providing? And is it a better product? I mean, NFC mobile payments. How can it be a better product? It is slower, it is more cumbersome, it is less convenient than using card and cash. I know all the vendors here, service providers, will not like what I'm saying. But I'm saying that, okay, take out your mobile phone. Now, I'm not even talking about the registration, downloading an app, configuring it. There are all sorts of problems in there. I'm saying that you've already done all that. That's it. Now, you want to use this mobile phone to make a payment. What do you need to do? First, you've got to take it out of your pocket or your bag. Assuming most people don't, have, don't hold this okay, 24 hours a day, and wherever they walk, they're holding this. So first, you've got to launch the app. First step, launch the app. Then you've got to open the wallet. Then you've got to enter a PIN. Now, that's a disaster, okay? Then you've got to press a button, tap the phone. And supposedly, you might have also collected some discount coupons or royalty points or whatever, and then you've got to scan the phone. Just imagine all the steps. Currently, we can pay with a card, NFC. I don't even have to take it out of my wallet. I go to MRT, I go to a store, a shop, and I just tap it. It's working perfectly, very efficiently. Is a mobile phone any better? Why would anybody want to switch to a mobile phone? For novelty? To show off? That is not a business case. So what volume do you need? Now imagine you're doing that at an ATM. I'm mean, sorry, at an MRT. Everybody takes out a phone. Instead of one second now to go through the turnstile with my card, I wish I don't even have to take it out, I tap on it and I walk through, let's say it's one second. Now I've got to take out my mobile phone and I'm fumbling with it, launch the app, open the wallet, enter a pin, press a button to activate it, tap on it. Now how long is it going to take? Five to 10 seconds. It'll be a complete shambles, okay, and fiasco in the MRT. All we need is three or four people fumbling with their phones and the phone might even not even work even though they are all NFC phones, they all have different configurations, the antenna is in different places, the apps are all different, how do you think that's going to work on an ATM, uh, sorry, on an MRT? High volume kind of payment system. That's why you don't see it happening. So if you can't get, okay, transit buses to accept mobile payments, Mobile, uh, we always refer to, to a phone. The, a card is just as mobile. Don't tell me my card is not mobile. It has to be the most mobile okay, device. Your phone is just a container. There's nothing special. All you're doing is to store your card details or your account details in the phone. What is so special about this? I really got all my details stored on my card. This is a container. There's nothing special about it. It's called a form factor. Why is everybody so excited about this? unless there's a real business case to do it. And what is the business case? No one has come up with a business case. And that's why mobile payments are floundering. They're languishing. You all might have read the Business Times article. I think the journalist actually put it very well. Okay, let me just read what she said. Just, just a statement. And I think that really sums up the whole situation with NFC mobile payments. 
the NFC payment portion is languishing. It is bogged down by the wariness of the banks, certification headaches for handset makers, and retailers who are not convinced the NFC will be the dominant standard. Merchants are indifferent. They really get no value out of installing or upgrading the systems to accept NFC. Look around you. Look at the whole retail okay, environment. Where and how often can you use NFC payments, except at McDonald's and convenience stores? How many? How many times have you used NFC payments in the last month? Once? Twice? Three times? None? That can't be reaching critical mass. If in this room, all of us are in the some are in payments or technology, okay, uh, um, profession or, or industry, and hardly any one of us here use mobile payments, so where is it going? What problem is NFC mobile payment trying to solve? What is it? So, you turn up at the store. Yes, you have a choice. Cash card or mobile phone. Of course, mobile phone is just running the first mile in a marathon. And it's already r running out of breath. Okay. Now let's look back at history a bit. Okay. I think MasterCard launched PayPass nearly 10 years ago. A trial was held in the United States about 10 years ago. Visa launched PayWave about six years ago or seven years ago. Okay. My dates might not be precise. Now, this is not new technology. NFC technology was invented nearly 20 years ago. It's been around for a long, long time. So we are not talking about new technology at all. Now, in the payments world, what do you think is the volume of PayPass and PayWave transactions. I've just told you in Singapore. Okay? It's 0 0.2 percent. Okay? It's not 2 percent. It's 0 0.2 percent of card payments. Do you know how small the pie is? It's a drop in the, in the ocean. And all the suppliers, vendors, telcos are all fighting for this very, very small pie. Even if you convert all to it, NFC mobile payments is still tiny. So what is it that we need to do to make this whole payment product viable? Can it ever be viable? That is the question. Let me go back. What is your business case? Is there a compelling reason that people will want to do that? Until you know those answers, you're staring at what I call failure in implementation and deployment. Yes, we have all competing products, but are they going anywhere? No. And even telcos wants a piece of the action, not realizing okay, how small the pie is. And the deployment and adoption is minuscule. This has been going on for years. When was Google Wallet launched? Two years ago or more. Now, you cannot say that Google is short of resources. But nothing is happening with Google Wallet. So what is NFC good for? Yes, for connectivity, for interaction. Okay? You bring two NFC devices together, you can exchange information. But for payments, well, until you know the compelling reason why people would use smartphone to make payments, there's no business case. 
So NFC actually stands for not for commerce. <laughs> Until you've got a business case, that's exactly what it means. Now we can all learn from okay, the services, the products that have been launched. Okay. Starbucks is not going NFC. It's a closed loop system. It's very different. They're going on barcodes. That will work on a closed close loop system. Okay. Even that, I kind of wonder about scanning okay, uh, a barcode. In the US, the biggest retailers, about 30 of them, have formed a, call it an association or a group, and they rejected Google mobile wallet and other wallets. They do not want to share their customer information with a service provider or a telco. So I think they have just decided in developing their own mobile wallet. But that's not based, that's not based on NFC. Okay. Walmart is the biggest retailer and it's rejected mobile wallet, NFC, and they're going on their own. That's because they do not want to pay the merchant transaction fee, the Visa, MasterCard, and the other brands. Now, if the industry wants to really learn how to make mobile payment simple and convenient, they should go to Kenya and learn about M-Pesa. Why is it so successful there? Yes, they don't have a sophisticated banking infrastructure, but learn about the simplicity and how it is launched we can certainly learn a lot of lessons by not blindly thinking, oh, because there's a mobile phone, you know, people just want to use it. It's not. Customer behavior is the most difficult thing to change. It's a habit. And you don't even have a compelling reason. And the mobile phone is more inconvenient, slower, cumbersome than a card, than cash. Why would you want to use a mobile phone for payments for? Especially if you've got to enter PIN and you've got to launch it, you've got to press also the buttons and it doesn't work. Then you try it again. This is what that has happened to me. I was embarrassed and I've never used it again. I've been to stores. And I said, why don't you use your okay, NFC reader? He said, no, 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 it's just too troublesome. They wouldn't even turn it on. But there are very, very few places with NFC readers anyway. And you're, and you're talking about low-value payments. Hey, what are we talking about? Low-value payments. How big can that market be for low-value payments? Why would you even bother? What is the excitement about low-value payments? So we have some very, very nifty device like converting a mobile phone, a tablet, into a point of sale. Yes, that is great. Okay? But that is not mobile payments. So, chicken and egg. You can drum up as much hype as you want, the vendors. The merchants are indifferent. The customers couldn't care less. So what business case do you have? Now let's look at the Gartner technology hype cycle. Where is NFC payments? Mobile wallet. It is now just sliding into the trough of disillusionment. Okay. In the next year or two, you will get to the bottom of the trough. And it might never get out of the trough. It might never ascend okay, into what we call the phase of enlightenment, okay? It might just get to this bottom 
and then it drops out. That is the prospect you're facing with NFC payments. I repeat, because there's no business case. What critical mass do you have to reach to make it viable? Nobody has even come up with some sensible roadmap, numbers, data to say what is a viable figure. Now let me get to security. Okay. Currently we have a very reliable, very effective okay, security infrastructure for payments. We have introduced two-factor authentication since 2005. And our fraud level is less than one basis point. There's hardly any fraud. Yes, there'll be isolated cases. We are not making security so tight that it becomes okay, a problem, becomes so cumbersome, and you can't get okay, real service of value. So we pitch it at a level so that we will not be faced with systemic risk or a large-scale attack. So you have three ways or three levels of security. First level is device authentication. Can we make sure that the device, whether it's a card, it's a phone, or an app, okay, would not be vulnerable to a large-scale attack or a systemic attack through cloning, counterfeiting, okay, or compromising those apps. The card, that's why we have gone to chip because the chip cannot be cloned or counterfeited. And that's why we want to get rid of Max Stripe. Max Stripe is the Achilles heel of all our card security. So we need to get rid of Max Stripe. Second level or layer of authentication or security is customer verification. Currently, it's two-factor authentication, PIN and one-time passwords, which have been very effective. But now, if you're going to go mobile, okay, entering pins, entering one-time passwords okay, might not be so convenient. And if you really want fast, fast throughput, it's really not convenient. So we need to look at security from other uh, methods or means. Then we have transaction authorization. So depending on the transaction value, you can apply okay, different layers of security. If it's low value payment, all you need is a device or app verification. That's it. This is exactly with a card. I've got all sorts of cards here. Do I go and enter a pin on my card before I can tap it? Do I need to launch it? Do I need to press all sorts of buttons to use it? You know how inconvenient that is for low value payments? And this is what you're doing in mobile payments. It, nothing is more inconvenient than using a mobile payment currently compared to all the other payment services and products we have. So why do you think NFC mobile payment will take off? Why? And how? So I've said that our current security system is based on two-factor authentication, PIN and one-time passwords. Now, I believe that there's a future for biometrics now. It has matured, the technology. It's convenient. And all mobile devices have a camera. Certainly, there's a microphone. And very soon, there'll be a fingerprint scanner. So you can use all three types of biometric security, okay. and it will make the use 
of a mobile device a lot more convenient and provide security, okay, that would be very effective or it can work in conjunction with pins and one-time passwords. So five types of biometrics. Iris is the most reliable and accurate. Certainly our mobile phones now have cameras that are powerful enough okay, to take Iris image. Voice, certainly that's a natural medium for a mobile phone, using your voice. Especially if you call the bank, you do telephone banking, or you contact the customer service center. You verify your voice within five seconds. Anybody remembers your telephone pin? And you go through this rigmarole of answering, okay? All sorts of silly questions the bank asks you. Okay? And none of that is secure because the information is not encrypted, it's not protected, okay? There's so many people in the banks or, or in the service centers that know all your Q&A answers anyway. And it is a pain to go through 10 questions and answer them, okay? To, for verification. So facial recognition, fingerprint, and veins. Veins now have achieved an accuracy level that's equivalent to iris. That's your finger veins or your palm veins. They are now in hundreds of thousands of ATMs around the world that's using okay, veins for verification. So, I think that's where okay, the future of authentication is moving. Certainly, they could work with pins and OTPs, depending on how you configure your payment service. I know I've said a lot of things that are not music to the ears of vendors. But I'm not here to please vendors. Okay? So, thank you for listening. <laughs>